So uh, two disciples are on a journey in this gospel lesson that we have for the third Sunday in Easter, and they're on this journey that they're not necessarily looking for something, but they certainly do encounter something that was really surprising to them. Of course, this should not be surprising to any of us in our life journeys because I often talk about how uh, when I do a funeral sermon, I'll talk about how um, our lives are like a journey. Every life is a journey. Every life that is, every life has a different journey. And so using that metaphor of of journeys, uh, especially now in the times that we currently are in, this, this gospel couldn't come at a more appropriate time for us in the journey, the strange journey that we are all encountering right now. But, um, you know, if you remember the, uh, the great theologian Forrest Gump, he said, you know, Mama always told me life is like a box of chocolates. You never quite know what you're going to get. That's the way it is with our journeys, right? We just never know in each and every day what that journey might bring to you, what the journey might bring for me. You know, we, we read the Bible and we find all kinds of amazing journeys from different people. Consider, uh, let's look at a few, like Jonah. Jonah was asked by God to go pro- preach uh, and prophesy to the city of Nineveh, uh, knowing that the Ninevites were, were terribly sinful people and uh, did did abominable things, and, and Jonah knew God also was slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, so he chose to go to Tarshish, which is the complete opposite direction of Nineveh. Of course, he's swallowed by the great fish, and once he repents and says he will go and preach, he's, excuse me, he's vomited up on the beach, and he goes back and he preaches, uh, and many people repent. You know, that's quite an interesting journey. What about the uh, prodigal son, the youngest of two sons? who treats his father as if he was dead, and he goes on a long journey when he gets his father's inheritance. That's how he treats him as if he's dead. And, and uh, you know, this journey does not quite go the way that he think it should. Uh, and he loses all of his money, and he ends up having to feed pigs and uh, starving. He decides to journey back to his family, hoping he might just be treated like a slave. But instead, he's met with uh, unmerited grace and forgiveness uh, that's quite a journey. He got, you know, he wasn't really expecting to be treated that way. Um, you know, sometimes our journeys do take us to places that we don't really intend to go, where we have to come back and ask for forgiveness. Um, finally, there's the, uh, how about the uh, journey of Paul? Uh, we first meet him as Saul. He's persecuting Christians, and on one of his trips, uh, he is uh blinded by the light of Christ, uh, who, who calls him to task for persecuting the followers of Jesus. And he ends up, of course, uh, turning his journey completely around to not being a persecutor of Christians, to being one of the greatest prophets of all time. So, you know, right now, our journeys are, well, we feel really conflicted about our journeys being, being cooped up because of this COVID-19 virus. But um, we have two disciples who are on a life-defining journey in the gospel. One of them is named Cleopas. We, we don't know who these people are. They've never been mentioned in the gospel before. They aren't special people. We know, of course, Jesus appeared to the twelve, but here he appears to two who are extended disciples. We know that they're disciples because they had witnessed all of the events that have happened since Jesus' arrest and and his trial and his crucifixion. And here they are journeying along, uh, sad, you know, grieving over the loss of their teacher and uh, mentor. And Jesus comes alongside of them and they're kept from recognizing him. And, and of course, we have to wonder why, right? Why were they kept from recognizing Jesus? Uh, we, can, we can consider, perhaps, that in being kept from recognizing Jesus, perhaps uh, this will open them up to being able to be more open to hearing what this stranger has to say. Often it comes through uh, strangers. We learn some of the most insightful things about our lives and about our ministries. Um, So they tell this stranger that uh, because the stranger wants to know what's going on, they tell him, of course, that uh, all that has happened, that their friends had found the tomb empty, 
Uh, the women came running back to tell them they found it empty. They, uh, two of the disciples had gone to look in. They found, of course, that it was uh, empty, and they were grieving because they thought that this was the end of uh, the ministry of Jesus. And so Jesus still, they don't know who he is, but he begins to open up and rework the message of their journey and the message of his ministry. And from uh, from the beginning, uh, from Moses and the prophets all the way up to the current times, he tells them how, look, you know, the Messiah had to suffer before he entered into his glory. And this was reworking this journey completely. It is not to be a journey of hopelessness now. It is to be a journey of hope. And hope is one of the most important lessons that we should take from this gospel lesson this week. Um, we should have hope because like Jonah, like the prodigal son, like Paul, God doesn't forsake travelers, even when our travels take us into places that are not so good for us. Uh, Jesus continues to come to us, come beside us, and gives us reason to hope. Right? This is one of the greatest lessons we can take from this gospel lesson. God does not forsake us when our journeys go south. Over and over again, God shows us patience when we retreat in our journeys, when when we wander in our journeys, God perseveres. God continues to, to come into our lives, to, to poke us, to make his presence known when we stray. God may even go to extreme measures to let us know that uh, God has not forsaken us. So throughout our journeys, you know, we find that God appears, God disappears, God comes to us, God speaks to us. Uh, again and again when we most need it. We just have to keep our eyes open and keep our ears open. But one of the things about this story that I really want to point out is about un how unremarkable not only is the, the events that are going on, but how unremarkable are these two disciples. Again, we know that it's Cleopas and, a, and its a companion. It might be his wife. It might just be a friend. We, we know they're heading towards Emmaus. We don't know if they're going to Emmaus or not, but they're ver veritable nobodies in the Gospels. And this is who Jesus comes to after he's appeared to the other disciples. Um, he appears to these two, who are journeying away from Jerusalem, who are going away. He gives them the greatest gift they possibly could ever get. And I think this is what gives us regular Joe and Jane uh, disciples some hope in our lives as we travel, travel along uh, on, on our paths. Um, Jesus comes along. If he comes along beside Cleopas and this other disciple, he's going to come along us on our journeys, especially now, you know, uh, as I said, this this gospel lesson, the road to Emmaus, is probably one of the. It, it couldn't come at a better time for us, as we are finding new ways to stay connected with one another. You know, first of all, we are reminded that Jesus is in the bread of communion, in the wine of communion. You know, in the breaking of the bread, that's when he's revealed to these these two disciples. And then they say about how their hearts were burning and how when Jesus was opening up the scriptures to them. So these are the ways that we know that God comes to us, that Jesus comes to us in the word, in the sacraments, right? When we break together, when we break bread together in communion today, we trust the promises that Jesus is there in those elements of bread and wine. And this should empower us. It should thrill us. Because, yeah, we expect Jesus to be there, but he promises to be there. He promised to come to us in those means. But Jesus also comes to us in ways that we could never expect. He may come in the form of a complete stranger. He may come to us as somebody sending us scriptures over social media uh, that bring us words of comfort. You know, He may come to us in... And through someone we hardly know, a complete stranger, you know, offering some kind of kindness, some kind of a, of a helping hand, you know, those unexpected text messages like I got this morning, someone reaching out knowing that I need Tylenol because, gosh, I go to buy Tylenol in the store and it's completely wiped out, just like the toilet paper. And somebody just randomly reaches out to me and says, hey, do you need Tylenol? I mean, those are the ways that we have these God moments. Where Jesus reminds us that he reaches out to let us know that we're not forsaken, we're not forgotten. 
God makes himself known, of course, in the pain, the confusion, the suffering, the loss, the companion, the, 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 you know, when we lack companionship, when we are feeling hopeless, Jesus will reveal himself through those words of scripture and through the, the uh, you know, we remember our baptism, you know, the, the mutual conversation and consolation of our brothers and sisters in Christ, of course. But, you know, we should expect Jesus to come into the ways that we know Jesus will come to us, but also uh, in the ways that are least expected when out of the blue somebody reaches out to us. You know, the greatest temptation of the devil is trying to trick us that God abandons us in these difficult journeys that we encounter. Um, you know, when we are suffering pain, when we are hopeless, uh, feeling hopeless, when we are, 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 are feeling that our lives are becoming emptier and emptier, more isolated and more isolated, God fills our journeys in unexpected ways, will come to us in unexpected ways, will bring to us uh, people who will uh, come beside us, I had a uh, funeral yesterday at a graveside, and I reminded the folks that, you know, it's in each and every person who comes to us that God is there, that we see Christ in each and every one of those people because they've come to support one another, to be with one another. And now, in this day of the COVID-19 scare, you know, it's in those ways that we connect with each other uh, through social media. You know, I've been working with my own parents to teach them, to help them understand how we can connect together with Zoom and what, what a way it opens up this ability for us to be together and to support one another and care for one another. So let me end with a prayer today from this gospel lesson. Let's end in prayer. Let us pray. Jesus, we need you with us for the day is before us and we have just no idea what is to come, perhaps just more of the same isolation. Our journey today may be uphill, it may be downhill. Soon the evening will be at hand and another day will pass. So we ask that you'll be our companion on the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken our hope. Bring us your presence. Reveal yourself to us in the ways that we expect through scripture, uh, through remembering our baptism, through the mutual conversation and consolation of our brothers and sisters in Christ, but also help us to be open to the ways that you come that we do not expect because you do not forsake us. You always remember us. Help us to see your presence each and every day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. My friends, don't forget to wash your hands, use hand sanitizer. We're flattening the curve. Things are getting better. Uh, call your brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, reach out to your family. Uh, let's be kinder to one another. Be someone's thankful today. God bless you.